Now let's take the briefest background look at some issues concerning living standards and also factor shares during the Industrial Revolution. There are literally thousands of pieces on this topic, but I'm going to consider just one for our purposes, and that's a piece by Robert Allen. The published title is listed here, but that's not actually the title of the version of the piece which is available online, and that one is called Engel's Pause, A Pessimist's Guide to the British Industrial Revolution. This is one good overview of what we're learning from the modern analysis of data drawn from this period. It really does seem there was slow progress during the early years of the Industrial Revolution. Ricardo, Malthus, and Marx, smart people, they all believed that real wages would remain roughly constant during a process of economic growth. For a long time, this seemed like a simple error, but in fact, the more we learn about the data, the more it seems this is a fairly reasonable interpretation of part of the Industrial Revolution period. For instance, if we look at the time period 1780 to 1840, spanning 60 full years, it appears that over those decades, real wages rose only about 12%, which of course is a very moderate increase. At the same time, output per worker rose 46%, so there were productivity gains, but for the most part, these gains were not being reaped by labor. Labor starts reaping benefits from productivity gains starting around 1840, and indeed we see that from 1840 to 1900, the real wage in Great Britain rose about 123%, at least as best we can measure it. Allen refers to there being actually two distinct phases of the British Industrial Revolution. If we look at output growth, that's given by this blue line here, and what we see is a steady upward movement throughout the late 18th and also the 19th century, pretty much without serious interruption. If we look at the series for real wages, that's this pink line here. What we see is the pink line from 1770 to 1840 is barely budging upwards, and real wages do start to rise and continue to rise from 1840 onwards, but it really takes quite a bit of time within the Industrial Revolution for those real wage increases to be realized. From the period 1770 to 1840, what really was going up was simply returns to capital, not to labor. What about rent or the returns to land? Well, both Adam Smith and David Ricardo had predicted that land would take up an increasing percentage of national income. But if we look at the best available data, what do we see? Well, the returns to land, they're given by this pink line. Here we are in 1770, the returns to land are slightly above 20% of GDP, and then as time passes, the returns to land are pretty clearly, pretty unambiguously falling throughout the entire 19th century. On this question, it really does seem that both Smith and Ricardo were wrong. On these questions, there's really an enormous amount more you can read, and I stress the data I've been using are far from perfect. To look at some other sources, go to our own video on the machinery question, and also our video on Adam Smith and the Industrial Revolution. There's a very good piece by Gregory Clark on living standards in England over the course of several centuries. Very important is the work of Nicholas Crafts, and also see pieces with Crafts, also with Harley and Nick. Uh, there's a very good piece by Charles Feinstein, maybe the best single piece on wages, and that's called Pessimism Perpetuated. And then finally, if you'd like a somewhat more optimistic take on wages during the early part of the Industrial Revolution, I would direct you to a piece by Jeffrey Williamson and Peter Lindert on the work of Crafts.